Hello everybody. I am here now at the same area as I've been um, filming before. It's the, the beginning of uh, an agroforestry system. This line, this is a tree line. We have planted it very densely with uh, all kinds of species. Uh, we started by seed or by cutting or even by uh, rooted plant. This was all um, planted uh, last uh, fall. So now we're uh, in September again and uh, we're closing in to the, yeah, to the next uh, chop and drop phase. You can see it's pretty weedy. Again, for me, I love to see it, a lot of biomass. Already the first fruits coming from this system. This is called the uh, Fisalis, very nice edible berry. High in vitamin C. So some of them grow very well here in Portugal. This is Cosmos, a beautiful edible flower. We've been harvesting for our food forest mix. And um, yeah, there's coming some more of the Fisales. I like that. There's some of the willow. So these uh, Eliagnes uh, having guy, they are doing great. You can see here more a willow which pushed itself through. Eliagnes is amazing, very big. The Shopus or the, the poplars, huge. They, they went here by cutting, very small. So, and there's here pomegranate also coming through. A lot of uh, vegetation, but uh, it, it looks lush. It just doesn't have, uh, it's just not very big. Here's the fig, also went in by cutting, coming through. But you can see the grasses really need to be removed. We did a bad job initially mulching it. Um, we uh, just were out of time. All these uh, goose, fo goose food are going to be great material for, for chopping and dropping. And then you see the rhubarb here at the base, which is uh, coming in between. Still no trees that I wanted to show you. They are here, you know, lost in the middle. Look at this, another pomegranate. They're looking good. They, they look lush. Um, yeah, so high, sh dense shade under all this. So any moisture that's in here stays very well. It's very interesting to see how fast there's this, this big uh, weedy canopy. Uh, this is amazing how, how high, how tall this quince got. It got uh, double the size since it's planted. I've been pruning it triple almost. I've been pruning it till here. Almost, I think, here. And it made all these side shoots. Just one year growth. That's crazy. And again, uh, poplar. Uh, I really want to show you those small trees. There's an oak, there's a chestnut, and all that is still alive. But uh, at the moment I cannot show you, it's just too hidden. They're hopefully enjoying the shade. But not, not too long ago I've been watching them and they were all growing really good. But now they are high, high shade. So this is uh, the, the mulberry also and then this is very deep rooted uh, weed. Which will be removed or at least chopped as well. You can see this is where I uh, pruned the mulberry. And now you get this all the way back. So it's one year growth here. Willows. And here's the strawberry tree, Madronjairu. And uh, artichokes over there. Here is uh, Anona, subtropical species, looking really good after uh, it was planted. This is another um, pomegranate and again an, a huge mulberry at the end here. Here's some castor bean which is going to be chopped really down to the ground and um, yeah just to give you an idea if you remember the other videos how it was and now how it is. Yeah, again, it's very weedy, so we will only see how it is after chopping and dropping everything, how it really is. It will look probably very similar to how it was when I planted it. 
but now I have a lot of extra biomass and the, and the, the species are rooted uh, and are more independent so they will need less water and there will be space for other things to grow bigger so as we as we see here's another beautiful fig tree and a huge grasshopper what he's gonna do there I don't know and um, so there is this yeah mini forest arising out of the out of this soil you know so just uh, putting cuttings and uh, a lot of seeds in the ground and you know in one winter or one summer you get this and now it's almost winter again I'm gonna bring this all down and give it all that organic matter back to the ground and uh, yeah hopefully we will regenerate a little bit of this land with better soil to start new plants like bigger fig trees for example and introduce even other species so there are some small trees i could show you but the the really interesting ones like the the the, oh here wait this one I was so interested about there is a chestnut went by seed and it just comes through you know uh, that is funny you know because there's so much comp competition you would say so much grasses and everything but uh, yeah just next to this guy so let's see what the growth stimulus it will get when this one gets pruned and the light comes because I get all these grasses and weeds gone put it on the soil around it to give it this extra blanket for the winter to come and then uh, yeah start chop and drop so I'm already enjoying a little bit of shade of this mini forest that is being created here and um, I have to say it was very low budget to put this in the ground we, we just basically had everything for free um, the the cuttings the and the seeds, um, most things, the, the broad bean seeds that were here initially alongside they uh, were purchased and um, we got a lot of broad beans with that so also paid itself and uh, I guess now it's a matter of uh, creating another opportunity to make some money as well with this area because otherwise it's just labor intensive and not really giving much back in the beginning and this is not where we're, uh, where we're after of course we also want to make it uh, somehow um, yeah giving some return so of course there will be return after several years as, as there will be some mulberries and all that but I kind of look really for another opportunity for some kind of annual crop or maybe a perennial crop which can be introduced uh, already this fall uh, so that all the work that I'm putting in with mulching and uh, yeah uh, regenerating this a uh, little bit let the light come in and, and and create space for those those small trees that eventually will be very big uh, to, to, to make some kind of um, yeah fast return some something I can eat or something I can sell. Oh, look at this really abundant rhubarb here. Also, just there in the middle of this whole system, um, the cosmos again all around it. The Agnes, your uh, the strawberry tree, beautiful willow. It all very lush, and uh, yeah, big trees coming. We're gonna chop this all down, get it back to a, a stage where we can manage it and see it better and introduce uh, probably some more broad beans again and otherwise who knows peas or something that I can grow now this fall. So it's chop and drop time, finally I got myself to do it, brought my tripod so I can make you a little time lapse on how this all goes. I'm the first step is mowing all the grasses around so I will have some place to uh, sit on my knees and work those tall weeds with the scissors or with a knife 
and uh, yeah, here we are. This is the part uh, probably I need I need to mow all the way down along the tunnel, and I already started here at this side. Uh, my mower is there somewhere on the ground. I'm gonna take a look. So in the course we did this weekend, we had a little tryout, and uh, I already pruned down the castor bean. One day later, it looks like that, and. Uh, this is what's left of the whole pruning session which was of course pretty fast and it's coming back you know so this will be new source of organic matter getting it from deep down there and of course all the carbon from the atmosphere in this to the, into new material that we can deposit down on the ground some beautiful uh, albizia coming along here this uh, mulberry tree it's going to be very crowded. Like I said already in the beginning, this is all over planted, over stacked, full of plants. I know now, actually uh, yesterday I noticed here the oak coming was by seed. These glasses are just removed by hand because it's unnecessary to like let it be all overwhelmed by this. And um, yeah, sometimes there's this little thing you have to do to get it all going um, yeah what I wanted to show you is that I have been starting to mow already here on the edge you see this beautiful fig this light is better now I can show you all the plants a little uh, more easy so this is uh, for example the, the one of those weeds that will be chopped soon and uh, yeah, we'll have biomass from that and a lot of more light will come into the system. Now it's getting more, uh, uh, the days are getting shorter. So we need more light. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm mowing all these tall grasses here. So I will continue doing that a little while. And also on the other side of the, the row, hopefully I can capture that on a time lapse. So something to realize when you're doing this is, is it, it is really nice that we have planted it everything as straight as possible in, a, in one line. Uh, of course I had to be very careful at the base for the drip line that is uh, there. One in the middle along the trees but also on the edge for uh, the species like the annuals, the broad beans that I have been planting earlier and I will probably plant again or any other species annual or perennial which I will plant alongside this tree line so this drip line is something I have to be very careful with but besides that it's very yeah it's very difficult to not hit any small species that's that's planted in the middle like some sapling that's just uh, germinating um, so therefore it, it's really important that you that you plant everything straight in, in one straight line if you don't do that then it's much diff more difficult to work with a machine uh, uh, working by hand then is a necessity because then you can be more precise so with the machine I'm fast of course I just have clean now the whole edge and now I just have to do the other edge but it's something to to be aware of when you're planting that you really need to put everything as straight as possible so you can really know where your species are when you're mowing for example um, it is really getting more clear now so a lot of the grasses are gone and I have a lot of mulch already which I can move against up the tree rows uh, yeah so let's continue So the whole line is now uh, mowed down with the mower, he uh, did a great job and um, yeah it's uh, pretty fast like this, I got all the material yeah quite nice small on the ground you can see I can easily walk here now it was totally different it was full of weeds so 
so a lot of the weeds are still in the row you can see in the middle in between the trees but you know that's the part that i have to do by hand and uh, yeah you can already see a lot more species so that's really nice i um yeah, i can now look back at it and you can see both sides of the row literally um yeah i'm i'm really happy how i can work it like this with the with the mower on the side with the weed whacker i can just trim the ba the edges first and now basically i have to go in and get all these uh, detailed uh, details done like uh, some weeds that are um, just uh, too too tall like these guys here and i, I do that by hand so to get you a more in detail uh, image of uh, how you can go around you have these uh, tall weeds here I, I really like to work with these little uh, knives sometimes I use scissors sometimes I use knives also bent fit on what I have on the hand uh, so yeah I have it on one hand free only but basically what I do a lot especially when I work by hand with the mower it's a little different but here is the drip line so I have to be careful and the other drip line must be somewhere over here and then there's another one over here so i have one two three just making a 75 centimeter bed but this is this this tall weed that i have in here you can see it and uh, they just go down like that you lay the plant down you get the root a knife just at the, at the root level. And there's better ways to do this obviously. Depends a little bit on what species, what plant you're dealing with. And so now you have the plant. And now you can use it anywhere you want. You can make it smaller even. Uh, with the scissors or, or just with the, with the knife. But uh, yeah, the, the basically the whole point of this is of course that you just get it out of this row and get it down. Whether you chop it up all the way small, that's up to you. It makes it always better, decomposition goes faster, how many more cuts you make. But it's also according to how much time you have available. So when all these tall weeds are gone, the light can come in again. The Anona, here's some really small Albitia coming. And there's here, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, avocado tree. It's crazy, a little bit dense. So this is how it was, already mowed. And then this is how it will look like. So I'm exactly halfway line, you can see all this material came out of it. So a lot is gone and a lot still to take. So that's how it will look like last pumpkin from the field was in between all this but it looks much more cleaned up and you can see everything has light now and this is all where it's about so funny enough it even starts raining just now i pruned really great this one i will still prune a little bit more later on but I liked it so much, so tall, and I want it to be big. But I'll get some lower branches off still, and maybe prune the tops a little bit. So, yes, this is how it can look like after pruning. Still uh, half of the road to go. And, uh, yeah, that's it. So, I'm literally two days later now, at uh, the same spot here where... Uh, the castor bean was pruned in this uh, tree line and um, yes that's uh, basically funny because these plants were not supposed to give seed I was pruning them really early and still the seeds are pretty well uh, matured very soon actually um, so these ones I will, uh, will keep and uh, plant them in the next tree line over there and uh, yeah, thank you very much for uh, for watching and I hope you got something out of it for your uh, project. We will continue with the implementation of this tree line here and uh, I will document that for you so you can see how it starts 
this is a result of one year and um, yes uh, of course the next year will be interesting because then we can see what type of produce we take out of it is something we can eat uh, so thank you for watching and see you in the next video